My left foot is in Austria and my right foot is in Germany. We're cycling the Danube River following the Eurovelo 6 from Germany to Romania. So that's Austria behind me. And then behind me that way is Deutschland. Day 50, what a beautiful way to start the day. We're nearly getting to halfway now of our trip and we're just cycling along the Danube here with no one else around us. The sun in our faces, the slight fresh air, the smell of the wood and the grass, the dew, birds tweeting. It's all very mellow. Um, this is why we come cycle touring. Mornings like this. It's paradise really. Today on day 50 we are going to go via Linz, which is the third biggest city in Austria. And we're heading towards a place called Mauthausen. And we're also going to go and visit one of the concentration camps. This is our first stop this morning. We're in Asach or Askash or Ashash, something like that. And we're going to stop for some breakfast. Um, as we didn't find any shops yesterday, we're going to have to eat out this morning. Oh no, what a shame. waiting here on the Eurobello just for a ferry across the river. Cost three Euro fifty this one, quite a pricey one. Basically we're gonna head over there and then follow the Danube all the way to a nice bridge and then we're in Linz. So we just got to Linz, just on the Danube, and uh, what a lovely entrance to a city. You basically come across the main bridge, and there's beautiful scenery of the river, and then you come into this huge market square with all these really pretty, colourful buildings. side or Linz and managed to find some camping fuel, got our shopping, got some bits and bobs, got a replacement mug because the brand new bamboo mug from um, Cotswold's shop already split down the side. Um, it's probably our fault. We've got one of those little fold away ones now, collapsible mugs which should work for forever and take up a lot less space. And yeah, just going along this lovely dike all the way outside of the city and we're just going to basically get back down to the river, find somewhere to have lunch and chill out really. Linz is the third biggest city in Austria, it's only 180,000, 190,000 I think it was. So it's really small still. Um, I love that because as soon as you leave the city, you come straight out back to this countryside along the river, it's really nice. Highly recommend Austria. Blah 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 blah. Just found this lovely little spot for lunch.
So we're almost at the end of day 50 and we've just come from the Mautshausen concentration camp. Um, it's obviously an incredibly somber place but it's very important that those who died there and everything that happened there is remembered. Day 51 and we've got another problem with the sleeping mat. I've been up since two o'clock but then Hazza very kindly let me sleep on hers from six. It's popped again. You see that all the air is going into one area and nothing into the others. Useless. I just can't not sleep anymore. And it was so comfy as well. It's really disappointing. Day 51. Look at that for a cycle sign. And this whole thing is a cycle cafe. Rad Farahassan Kitchen. Just going over the dam at Woolsey. And this is green. We're gonna go on this now. This is the ferry. Um, far means ferry and the Uber Fair also means ferry. It's just confusing. Over there. That used to be the most treacherous part of the whole Danube. Um, and then after the Second World War, they, they built all the hydroelectric dams and it calmed it all down a bit. Um, so all the boats could go through. Happy days. So along the Euro Velo 6 here, especially in Austria, the sign has just been incredible. Um, this is IBS or YIBS or YBBS. We're really not sure how to say it. I think it's IBS. Old Town, or if you want to just skip it and carry on. So clever. I'm going to go to the Cycle Museum now. Thanks, bro. Oh my god, the brake is itchy. That thing there goes down. It just drops off a bit. That's incredible. This is for you, Josh. This is your uh, penny carving tattoo. Here we are, we just got into Poklan. This is where we're going to stay for the night in a cheap hotel because I burst my bed last night. <laughs> Day 52, and we just had a really, really good sleep in this hotel. And we're cycling to Zwentendorf today, and it's basically halfway between here and Vienna. So we get to Vienna on Sunday. It's Saturday morning, and it's very sunny, and I've had a good sleep. This is Melk. Just crossing over the Danube River from Melk and it looks like we're going to get a nice tailwind today. We are going that way, all the way up the river for about 70k. Today we've been basically going through these really pretty old towns all day. Um, been totally different and all in the gorge as well with these amazing mountains behind and all the vineyards as well. See that? Euroverde 6 today has been an absolute dream. The whole way has been so smooth as well, just like this one is here. This one's taking us to Zegendorf or wherever it is, which is our last camping stop in Austria before we get to Vienna tomorrow. Oh, look, the nudists over there. Wave to the nudists. We're going to Vienna today. Very exciting. We haven't had breakfast because we left really early, as I said. So what we're going to do is just um, dry our tents out somewhere on the river and have some porridge, cook up down there, and then check-ins two o'clock or three o'clock um, at the hostel, which we've got for two nights. And then later on, we're going to just sort of wander around Vienna, um, enjoy it, and, and then we're going to queue up for the cheap tickets for the opera. I'm sure it'll be fun. Oh, my water's falling out. God. So apart from the opera and Vini's Whirls and Sasha chocolate cake, what I'm also really looking forward to finding out is whether or not Vienna deserves to be labelled as the most livable city in the world. Um, apparently it's just overtaken Melbourne and I love Melbourne and my brother Josh lives in Mel Melbourne and it is a very livable city, it's amazing. Vienna though, in a landlocked country in the middle of Europe. 
Hmm, how can that compete with Melbourne? We will see, yeah. It's a little bit like a tramp camp. <laughs> a the nicest way possible. Great idea though. Some of our stuff hanging out to dry. Vienna in the distance. Lots of amazing graffiti street art. Lots of little places to play football, a few basketball courts. We made it, just got to Vienna. This is our really cool, cute little hostel. Going for some local specialities tonight. Massive schnitzel with extra uh, onion rings, large chips. That's gone for a biggest sausage you can find. <laughs> so this is the Ferris wheel of Vienna, made in 1945, very very old. To think we cycled here all the way from London. It's amazing. Looking forward to Eastern Europe, as our... to unlock our bikes and somebody has locked their bike to Monty. I've had to unscrew the whole back pannier and leave it locked to some absolute idiot who's just locked the whole bike to the, but luckily just to the pannier rack and not to the whole frame. Went through a few options and we decided that that's going to be our best bet is to basically leave the frame there and then come back lock in the morning. Yeah come back in the morning and just unlock it and hope that they've unlocked it. So we waited for another half an hour or so, 45 minutes. Back together. Hey! The guy came back, uh, he must have just been watching the opera as well. He came out at about 10.05, something like that, and we were just about to go. We were like, we'll stay till 10 past 10, then we'll go. Um, so after unscrewing Harriet's pannier rack, leave it on the floor we're about to go and lock it up go back to the hostel and then the guy came and has a ran over there and said you what do you say 
No, you're not taught back to buy a bike. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so sorry in very German English. Yeah. Um, he said he was in a rush he's and very uh, apologetic. he's very apologetic, so we'll didn't go. Off. Yeah, we we'll let him off. Um, so, very good. We can, means we can go to bed and we can just go to Bratislava tomorrow without having to come back here and call the fire brigade or something or buy a new pannier rack, which is not good. So, yeah, all good. Monty's back together. Oh, <laughs> happy days. Day 55, just leaving. Western Europe. Today we're going to Bratislava. We just found the longest road in the world. Look how far it goes for. It feels crazy that we've actually cycled all the way to Bratislava, or nearly. Yeah. Eastern Europe. <laughs> we're looking forward to Bratislava this afternoon. We, I've got a lovely afternoon's itinerary planned. I went here on stag do for my good friend Daniel Sleaf back in February. It was freezing cold, as you imagine, in Eastern Europe in February. So this is going to be lovely. We're going to walk up to the castle. We're going to take house of some nice local food, a couple of beers. Um, we're going to go to a sky bar, see the sunset. Snack time. 42 kilometers to go. It's our first time we've seen. It's the first time we've seen Bratislava as well on a sign. Long, long way. Oh no! Look, it turns into gravel now. Oh god. National Park Donau Auen Einzigart Auenlandschaft in Mahersen Neuro Pass. Oh, there's Vienna. So we basically come. Bloody hell, it's massive, isn't it? We're kind of following this all the way. Literally goes from Vienna all the way to Bratislava. Bratislava's literally here just over the border. This is our last lunch in Western Europe on this trip. And we found a really nice little bench. And has us making some goat's cheese fig and. Parma ham, baguettes, we've got some coffee, some snacks, this is going to be amazing. And then when we get to the border of Austria and Slovakia, we get to Hainburg, uh, which was extensively fortified in the 15th century, with two and a half kilometers of walls, three city gates, and 15 defensive towers. And then we are going to essentially just cross over the border and get into Bratislava. Just about. Yours nearly got locked for the stage in Austria. 